Hello everybody and welcome to another video. So, uh, in an episode last week I mentioned a website called Guild Wars 2 Time. I even showed a little bit of it. And I mentioned to you guys that uh, in a future video we could talk about how that website works, what exactly it does. You see, uh, moving into Heart of Thorns, I've kind of realised something. There's a lot of stuff that I do in this game, farm based stuff. Um, that I've never really talked about, never really covered on the channel, and I figured moving into Heart of Thorns when uh, the kind of things we can do uh, are going to explode open to us, it might be nice to actually document a few of these. So, let's talk about GW2 Timer today, and in particular, I want to teach you guys something many of you vets out there will be familiar with, uh, how exactly we farm the world bosses. Now, I will open this video and say, if you're kind of new to the game, if you're coming back for Heart of Thorns, um, if you don't have like a fully geared character or anything, this is kind of like the dream farm, this is the dream thing that you you should be doing to earn money to get that initial gear set um, and this is the kind of thing you can do as well that if you ever feel like Guild Wars 2 feels kind of empty MMOs are funny things then that everyone will end up congregating to a few of the same areas and the world boss trains as you will see in the footage of this video uh, currently I'm just running around at the Tengu wall you'll see just how populated the game ends up looking um, I'm actually running because I got my new PC I decided to try and film it all with no culling and max uh, character options so the frames do drop a little bit here and there but um, it's some of the prettiest footage that I think I've uh, ever managed to grab. So uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what exactly we're farming for and go through this step by step. Um, so what we're going to be using is uh, a website called Guild Wars 2 Timer. Ideally, I'll get to that in a second. You don't have to use that. But the goal today is to teach you guys how to farm world bosses. For our efforts, we're going to be getting gold, which of course is one of the main things for many of the farms that exist in the game. We're also going to be getting uh, a fair amount of karma. I'll give you guys the exact amounts I get after we complete this farm. Um, and also we're going to be getting experience. Now, usually I wouldn't mention that we got experience, but moving into Heart of Thorns, do consider that uh, Masteries will once again make experience relevant. And so things that give us a lot of experience, that experience waiting we get from completing events, may actually now feel like it's worth something. I'm not saying this is the best way we'll be able to finish our Masteries once the expansion drops, but it will be a way we can uh, acquire them. So the other stuff we will be getting is a lot of champion boxes. Um, and these, of course, are going to be dropping us the chance at a few exotics. It could drop us skill points and uh, tier 6 materials. And then uh, the main things we're going to be getting from this guy, from killing world bosses, is we're going to get a ton of greens. We're going to get some exotics. I managed to get one in the run I did. And uh, we're going to be getting mainly rares. Lots and lots of rares. And rares, of course, mean lots and lots of ectos. Ectos, of course, being one of the main things you're looking for when you're crafting initial armor sets. Maybe you're rolling a new character or it's one of your first ones coming back. So it's a very useful farm. Uh, and the thing that really makes it shine, it's not going to outpace dungeons, for example, in any of those things I just described to you, perhaps with Karma it will. But what it does offer is it's very, very easy, okay? Incredibly easy, one of the easiest farms you can do in the game. And uh, it comes at very low requirements for what you need. What you currently see me wearing on this is Magi's gear. This is my healing power set. This is what I did the entire farm in. Um, and I was pretty much just fine, okay? This is a brilliant beginner farm in that all you really need is a level 80 character, or even there you can push it to not be quite 80. And uh, most importantly, you're going to want to have explored most of the world. Not even got map completion, just make sure you've explored most of the world and got a whole chunk of the waypoints around there because you're going to be doing a lot of waypointing all around the face of Tyria. Aside from that, pretty much any gear is fine, pretty much any weapons are fine, and any class is fine. Uh, I will explain some optimal stuff though that you can be running in just a second. The only other big key thing is you want um, access to Guild Wars 2 Timer. Uh, there are other apps. This is the one that I use mostly though, which um, is available from the website in the link in the description. Now Guild Wars 2 Timer, if I scroll to it now for you guys, is uh, this website here. What it will show you is a map of the world. Now multiple monitors are really, really useful here. You can have this on your secondary monitor while you play the game on your first. And what this will do is it will show you exactly where you need to go and when you need to go there to earn money from killing world bosses. So uh, that's how it's done. Uh, essentially, in principle, the idea here is that all around Tyria, about every 15 minutes, a huge new supposedly challenging difficult mega boss will spawn somewhere in the world. Now, I'm sure that when ArenaNet designed these encounters, they thought they were going to be these fantastic, difficult, engaging pieces of content. Truth is, they're utterly face roll. All you have to do is auto attack a couple of times and then pretty much AFK. And uh, while some people may chastise you for um, being so absent minded while killing these things, it's very rare because the speed at which you kill these bosses barely matters anyway. There are only a few that are mildly engaging. And even there, if you were to die fighting them, as long as you've hit them a few times, you can get carried by the rest of the Zerg and you'll still get full credit, full loot, full rewards. 
So this is the idea, but as a regular player of the game, how are you supposed to know in this massive world where the world bosses are or when they spawn? Like right now, I couldn't tell you guys without looking at a website, without looking at a list that shows the set schedule for all of these bosses, which is the same every day. Um, I would have no idea who is up and when. I don't have that commit to memory and most people don't. That's where the website Guild Wars 2 Timer comes in. Uh, if I alt tab over to it now, you guys will see we've got our world map. And over here on the right, we've got a pane of information. Um, and what this is doing is it's showing us what boss is currently live and where. You see this clock that we've got up here? It means that while it's from 12 to 3 here on the minute hand, uh, we'll be able to fight this boss. And if we were to click this icon here, you'll see that we are zoomed in to a location on the world map. This is Blood Tide Coast, where a world boss exists. This world boss is Tida Covington. And here on the right, you'll see it's got information about her and the events we have to complete. The campaign against Tida Covington is the name of the meta event. We've got to eliminate the cannons at the north defense, capture her southern defenses, defend the galleon and help destroy the gate, and then finally kill Admiral Tida Covington. So if we wanted to kill this world boss, get this loot, the map is showing us where we need to go we need to go to the laughing girl waypoint so we'll go back to the game and then all we have to do as a player it really is this simple is we come over to blood tide coast we hit laughing girl waypoint and then we follow the set path that it's given us so we can walk up the red line here it will show us where we would move to complete the event currently the green starburst is where the event is situated and we'll go meet the other players over there. Immediately, you're going to notice things are happening once we load in. If you have a look at my mini map down in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see there's a bunch of uh, uh, icons there. And you've, of course, got uh, another player over there already we're seeing. See, because this is so easy and because so many people are familiar with where these bosses are, you tend to find a lot of players in Guild Wars 2 do this. Um, Guild Wars 2 is constantly called a casual game. It is a very casual game. This is the most casual way you can earn money. And boy, does it show from the amount of people who take advantage of it. So we're just going to try and get up to the event area, this giant circular section here. Uh, I guess we'll move through here. I actually usually come to the event from a different area, but that's fine. You can try and use any route that you wish. I, of course, am a bit of an idiot, and I've taken a really stupid one. In fact, I got lost there for a second. Let's cross over that. And here you see we're at the meta event. All we have to do really is tag it. Tyler Covington takes a long time. We have to break through this gate, so I won't worry too much about that. There'll be a wild boss we kill in a second, and then when we kill her, we get our loot. So that's pretty much the uh, farm in principle. Then you can go back to GW2 timer and the map will automatically move. You'll see very shortly now, um, another boss is going to spawn. When the minute hand hits three, um, we're going to find this boss spawn. So if I click this, we'll see we come over here. We're now down here at the battle for Wickmire Swamp, which it tells us spawns in just two minutes. So this is the, really the power of Guild Wars 2 timer. We can expand this and have a look at the individual events here. We know exactly what waypoint we want to go to. And then even in half an hour's time, we can click this over here. And we'll see again that the battle for Mount, Mount Maelstrom and the Evolved Destroyer, I think this is the Evolved Destroyer, Mega Destroyer, will be spawning um, here in this Volcano Caldera. So all you really need before you go into this is the waypoints. And then once you've got them, you can easily browse and see exactly what's going to spawn and when. Here's the Shadow Behemoth is going to be spawning in the Queen Cell Swamp and so forth. There are a lot of other options available to you on this website. Um, this is just the scheduled bosses section. This is something ArenaNet standardized a while ago. There are a lot of other bosses and things to do in the game though. I'm not going to cover these functionalities of Guild Wars 2 Timer in this episode. If you guys are interested, we'll look at some other farms though. We've got Dry Top available. We have Legacy bosses available. These are actually still in the game and still drop stuff. Um, we've got the Ore Temples. These are different farms, different things you can do. Uh, there are, you've also got some other tabs here and it can be useful for these. For example, um, Daily Achievements will be listed here. The amount of dungeon paths you've done can be uh, viewed. The jumping puzzles that are available in the game. All the resource nodes that can spawn in the game. There's a lot of stuff. A very, very powerful tool. But today we're just looking at the scheduled boss section though. So that's basically the farm in principle guys. Uh, I will talk a little bit about how long this is going to be taking. And um, the really cool thing about this farm is you can just drop in and do it for as long as you like. It's not like when you're doing um, a dungeon where you have to stick it out for the whole path or maybe even your uh, group is asking you to commit for the entire dungeon, maybe even an entire dungeon sweep. This you can just go in individually. It requires having no other players and you can just kill whatever boss is spawned right now or you can stick about. Now every reward you get here when you kill a world boss is going to drop for you a chest you can physically open on the world which will be piled with greens, will have uh, the occasional rare in it, the occasional exotic in it, and also you will get for defeating uh, one of these world bosses the first time a day as well, a bonus chest that is guaranteed to have 
a rare in it, or depending on how difficult the boss was, more than one rare. And so this is where your primary loot comes from. But the thing is, these are just daily chests. So the idea is you're probably going to kill all the world bosses, maybe once a day or that day that you play Guild Wars 2, and then you're going to leave it. Uh, the full cycle of every single world boss on these scheduled timers is around three hours long. So if I started right now, um, and I started killing these world bosses, they spawned one every 15 minutes or so, in about three hours... I would then have defeated every single boss on the rotation, and I wouldn't really have any more bonus chests to do. So you can do it for as long as you like, but really it's going to cap out about three hours. In addition to that, however, um, of those three hours, the last hour and a half is actually not that profitable because you're going to find you start repeating a lot of events you've already done. So what my recommendation for you guys would be if you want to do this to start earning cash is do it just for the first hour and a half because in the first hour and a half you're absolutely every time getting a new boss, you're getting new loot, you're never like repeating events that you've already done during that day. Um, if you stick about for the second hour and a half you'll kill maybe three more bosses in that entire time as opposed to killing like nine in the first hour and a half. So that would be my recommendation do it as long as you like about an hour and a half of uh playing through it to get like max rewards for your time and the full three hours if you really if it doesn't like kill your brain cells too badly uh let's talk about a couple of the limitations and problems you might have while doing this farm what makes it a bad farm i have to admit this isn't something i do too much just because i find it so I mean, it's good when you're trying out new builds and you're trying interesting builds. This entire sweep I ran, for example, on my Magi's gear. But overall, it is kind of a boring farm because you're going to kill a boss. For example, Tida Covington, she just spawned. The gate just broke open here. She's running out. Um, and this boss, for example, she's a perfect example. She doesn't even do any damage. Like, she actually does no damage. I'm on a healing power spec here, okay? And this is how low and easy these encounters are. That still, they give you great reward. Uh, as I'm fighting her here, I will drop a healing rain and I have powerful heals. You'll see... I don't even get any green numbers. I'm actually getting no outgoing healing at all because the boss does nothing. She's a legendary mob that stands there and gets hit a few times. I've already tagged credit for the event. I could go away in AFK. Now, this sounds kind of fun and this can be nice for people who just want easy money, but it can be very, very boring. So what I'd actually recommend is once you kill a boss, you're going to have a bit of downtime waiting for the next one to spawn and you should fill that time up with other w methods to earn money. Now, these are things I could cover in the channel as well. You guys will have to let me know if you want to hear about these. Um, um, but there are a lot of things you can do during downtime, and I'd very much recommend you guys try these. You can uh, gather materials in the general vicinity of these bosses. You can play the trading post if you're any good at that. You can actually join other farms like champion trains. Again, things I've never really talked about on the channel before. Um, you can salvage stuff. You can flush greens and uh, sigils, runes, and things in the Mystic Forge to try and earn money for yourself. Or you can even start darting onto your alts between those 15 minute spawns of bosses to uh, grab stuff like silver doubloons. That's a pretty interesting farm or you know just even get map completion for your characters i would say that because this is so low intensity if you really want to feel like you're play play playing guild Wars 2 you're going to want to fill up this downtime like for example as soon as tida is dead here i'm going to want to go do some other stuff so that's one limitation i do think that is very much worth mentioning that's something that stops me doing these a lot if you have good company and good friends then they can make it less boring but um it is one of the more mundane things you can do in the game here's another thing you just saw I got bronze credit for the event. So here's another problem that can occur, and um, this is where your gear will come into things just a little bit. Um, this is the idea of actually being able to tag the events. See, what if I only just started recording this video 10, 15 minutes ago? I could be rushing to Laughing Girl Island right now. What I want is that last tag, that last little hit on the boss. But if I don't do enough damage to the boss when it scales up very highly, the game might say, hey, you didn't contribute enough. You didn't do enough to deserve credit for this kill. And that can kind of suck. I only got a bronze reward there. So this is another limitation of the farm. Um, what you're actually seeing footage in this video of me using is Magi's gear, which is pretty well renowned as being one of the lowest, if not the lowest, DPS sets in the game. I mean, Nomad's gear is obviously going to be worse, but this is really, really, really low damage gear. It has no power on it, for example. So I'm really hitting very, very low. And this means that sometimes I wouldn't get full gold credit for the events. And this would mean as well if I was running late to events, maybe I wouldn't get credit at all. While if I was, say, on Berserker gear or something that was much higher DPS, at least gear that has flat power boosts on it because many bosses can't be crit anyway. In those situations, I would have actually gotten the tag. 
So this is something to bear in mind. I did want to do this on a very low DPS set to uh, be able to talk intelligently to you guys about how serious of an issue this is. For the most part, I managed to tag every single boss even on my Magi's gear. This is why it's totally fine if you're like a level 70 in white. You're still going to be getting tags for completing these events, especially if they're in low scaled areas. And uh, overall, it's not a huge issue, but that is something you can come into. Along the same idea of arriving late to events, this means you might want to consider um, for your abilities stuff that offers you a lot of mobility. So you can see here on my Elementalist, I've got my Conjure Fiery Greatsword already. I've got Lightning Flash on my bar. I could run stuff like uh, Dagger Dagger so that I've got Ride the Lightning and um, Burning Speed just so that I can move quicker, just so that I can get around and apply swiftness to myself. Um, other things useful for this as well is it's kind of irritating when you're running through some of the higher level zones and random mobs start attacking you. In these situations you are uh, playing stuff like Guardian or anything that offers blocks, Arcane Shield again for the Elementalist, uh, Guardian Focus 5, Guardian even just with his Aegis, there's a lot of uh, classes that have these kinds of things available to them. Um, these stopping the enemies hitting you and putting you in combat and slowing you down can also be very useful, just like Condi Cleansers can be useful to you know break yourself out of combat. These are the kind of skill decisions that you're going to be making while running world boss trains. The other main thing that you really want to to consider is some kind of a stun break because some of the enemies will CC you and for example like Golem Mark 2 uh, if you're running through this, you'll notice he actually do does quite a lot of damage and has quite a few CCs. And uh, most importantly, though, I would say try to have some kind of a ranged option. Uh, there's a reason I was on Staff at the start of this video. It's because Staff gives me that ranged damage. I don't have to be anywhere near the bosses, and just that ranged element trivializes most of the damage they can do. Some of these bosses pulse out massive damage around their uh, their hitbox. Uh, for, so, for example, the Fire Elemental, Shadow Bemoth to an extent does it, Shatterer does it. A lot of people do this. Um, so by having some kind of range option unlike many other areas of Guild Wars 2 where you really probably want to be melee ranging wild bosses is pretty much the best thing you can do because it's not about killing stuff quick anyway and this ensures that you can keep rolling out damage safely from afar in 70% of the cases the last problem you might have with this farm, honestly, and this is going to seem really trivial, but it's one of the most basic things you can do in the game, um, is FPS lag. Now, I have got a pretty beastly rig now, and even in this video, you'll notice those frames take a hit. Um, this is very, very difficult to run in the world boss. If you really want to see everyone, these full, massive vistas, see how beautiful Guild Wars 2 really can be with tons of people killing these massive bosses, um, it's going to cost you a lot of frames. But the main thing you can do to counter this is uh, you can go to your generic graphics options and I'd very much recommend the main thing you want to change is character model limit down from highest to lowest. This will pretty much guaranteed put you back up to acceptable frames. This would always put me straight back to 60 if I ever wanted to use it. Um, I just, for the purposes of the video, wanted to demonstrate what it looked like on highest. That is the last thing you can really struggle with. Um, if you really try and push the game as well and you don't have the rig for it in these scenarios, your game can crash. Mine even crashed, which hasn't happened for a long time when I was killing the Karka Queen yesterday. So uh, do try and consider that. And keeping the character model limit quite low is probably the best thing you can do. The character model quality will affect things as well but not as much as character model limit will so that's pretty much it if you do want really really optimal gear i would say either run berserker stuff so that you can tag stuff assassin stuff is pretty much fine as well you're barely going to get any pressure against you at all so don't worry about defensive stats on gear but the main thing you just want to focus on is having power somewhere on your gear. This will help you compete for a lot of tags. Uh, you don't need to have incredibly high quality gear because a lot of the time you're going to be getting downscaled anyway and you're going to be roughly around the same uh, level, equal footing as other people. Um, and many of the bosses can't be crit anyway. So it's just about having power. Power is a main stat. Even stuff like PVT, even though the vitality and toughness is going to be pretty much useless, um, it is better and preferable to, for example, Magi's where I don't have power at all. A couple of things to note uh, before I wind the video down. I want to take us back to Guild Wars 2 Timer. If you did want more information about the specific bosses, like what exactly you have to do, uh, most of the time you're just going to be auto-attacking the big enemy you see in front of you. But if you do want more information, uh, GW2 Timer actually over here has a help FAQ about and walkthrough section. This is the third tab. If we hit this, um, you can actually come to scheduled bosses, which is what we're killing right now, and it will give you um, a short paragraph of information about every single boss you will encounter. Um, in particular, 
particular the um, more difficult ones like the Golem Mark II. I think this guy's the, probably the hardest world boss you have to fight. It will explain their mechanics wonderfully to you. It will also explain the pre-events for spawning these world bosses, which you're going to want to pay attention to. This is a big thing. A lot of people will just stand around and wait for the boss itself to spawn. And yes, it doesn't really matter that we spawn the boss very quickly because they're all in a set timer anyway. It doesn't matter how, kill, how quickly we kill the Shatterer. We're still going to have to wait the same amount of time for the next boss anyway. But, um... Doing these pre-events and being actively involved instead of stood around will net you more event credit, which is more gold, more experience. Again, think about the masteries and karma. Um, and karma, again, hopefully will have some decent syncs when the expansion rises. So uh, it is really worthwhile doing these. And um, Guild Wars 2 Timer actually does explain in some serious detail, actually, uh, things about these events you probably had no idea about. For example, this, this boss we're looking at right now will actually eat enemies in the area, um, which is something I never knew it did at all because they're to be such huge zergs around. For what it's worth, if we're doing this for karma or experience, don't forget to uh, pop your food. You'll find there are so many players around, they often drop bonfires for you. You can press F at these and they'll give you like a 50% karma boost. They'll give you 50% experience boost. And there's other stuff too. Look at the guild banners that people in the zerg are dropping around. Interact with these. There are foods like Krauka chocolate, which gives you even more karma. You've got the utility amulets that you can then uh, put like a karmic infusion in. Uh, all of these things are going to boost your profits. Let's talk about profits though. We're back here on list. As you can see, the Zerg's uh, flown away now because Tyler Covington's dead. Uh, now, I did a full sweep of this. This is the full three hour run, um, not just the one and a half hour run. And I just about had enough inventory space. You actually notice here I'm encumbered because I just killed uh, a Tyler. But this is what I got. Um, now, I, do, uh, I did actually record my numbers for you guys of what I started with. So let's open up my wallet here. I actually started in terms of gold before I did this run, um, and I've done very little else. Um, I started this run with 66 gold, 64 silver, and 92 copper, and now I'm up to 71 gold, 25 silver, and 66 copper. This is before selling anything. Then I also um, began with 1,647,000 karma. I'm now at 657,000, so I've got about 10,000 karma. This wasn't going particularly ham with the boosts. And um, in terms of experience, I can tell you guys uh, with skill points, I started at uh, 1,133 skill points, and I got basically a level from it, which isn't too impressive, but I'm kind of close, I suppose, to my next one. And again, this was without actually augmenting or boosting myself. Uh, this is mostly, though, an hour and a half's work. The second hour and a half really don't offer you too much, so you can look at these numbers and expect to get very close to them in just an hour and a half, which is pretty nice. Uh, here's the, my inventory as well. I kept everything that dropped. I did not deposit collectibles. Top row is stuff I already had, so you can ignore that, but starting from here, this is loot I got. I got 110 Dragonite Ore. I got a whole ton of greens. I got a bunch of champion boxes. Champion boxes can be either um, exotic rarity when you're level 80 or there's a chance for them to be lower when you're in lower level zones. Um, a whole ton more. Got some interesting lower tier mats which tend to actually be worth more at this point in the game. Um, and even I got an exotic, if we deposit collectibles here... Um, and we could open all of our boxes. I got a chest of monstrous goods because of the daily that was going on yesterday. Apparently, it still thinks my inventory's full, which is funny. Oh, hold on. I need to accept that. There we go. Um, and then I also got a bunch of rares. I'll count the rares up for you guys. These are the important things. These are probably what you're going to want to salvage. We got one rare, two rare, three rare, four, five, six, seven rares, eight rares, nine rares, ten rares, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen... 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 rares. Um, so you would probably get about 15 rares if you only did the hour and a half thing. And I got Akmal's Jewel as well as an additional exotic. So all this stuff can be given lots of Ectos, which again is a lot more money and would really boost this up. But just in terms of raw cash, you can see I already got a fair amount uh, rolling in. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's GW2 Timer. That's the World Boss Train. I know uh, for a lot of you guys, this may not have been the most um, mind-blowing video in the world. But it is something that's so core to what people do in Guild Wars 2. Just look at these huge numbers of players here. And I've never talked about. So there we go. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you are interested in hearing about some other farms, I do have uh, a whole ton more that I participate in. Some more obscure ones as well. How to farm various titles and get achievement points. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff out there. Let me know if you're interested in that. In any case, thanks very much for watching, guys. Um, and I guess I will see you tomorrow.